Hello and welcome to Run Testers. My name's Nick, and in this video, we're going to be comparing the A6 Nova Blast 3 and the Hoka Mac 5. So, the Hoka Mac 5 and the A6 Nova Blast 3 are both you know, daily trainers that are pretty versatile, two of the best non plated training shoes on the market, I'd say. And when it comes to the key specs, start with the price, they're quite similar in price. The Nova Blast 3 is £135 in the UK, $140 in the US, whereas the Mac 5 is £130 in the UK, or $140 in the US. The Mac 5 is the lighter shoe, it's 229 grams, or 8.1 ounces, in my UK size 9, whereas the Nova Blast is 257 grams, or 9 ounces. Both of them are a little bit lighter than the previous versions. Actually, it's a fairly big drop when it comes to the Nova Blast. The Nova Blast has an 8mm drop and the stack's listed at 31mm at the heel, but ASIC doesn't include the outsole and insole in its um, stack measurement, so I think if this was from another brand you'd see a stack height of over 35mm pretty comfortably, whereas the Mac 5 is 29mm at the heel, 24mm at the forefoot for a 5mm drop. So a key uh, upgrade on Nova Blast 3 compared to the 2 is that the midsole is now made from Flight Foam Blast Plus, which is a lighter, softer, springier foam than the Flight Foam Blast used on previous versions of the Nova Blast. You get a little bit more stack, less weight, which is a great upgrade, especially as it's a better foam all round. The outsole is Ahar rubber. You've got pretty good coverage in all the key areas there, although it's not the thickest layer of rubber you'll see on a training shoe. And then you've got a mesh upper with quite a lot of padding around the heel, but not a lot on the tongue there bit of a plastic bit at the heel for stability but again not a lot there it's you know it's reduced compared to the previous version there's fairly stripped back upper all round but to add a bit more stability you do have sidewalls of midsole foam that your foot kind of sits in there so you know you're not wobbling around too much in it the uh, Mac has a nice lightweight mesh upper, decent amount of padding around the collar there, not much on the tongue. You've, you've got a dual density midsole, so the bottom layer is made of rubberized EVA foam, and then you've got a top layer of ProFly Plus, which is a nice responsive foam. Uh, I think it's a super critical foam. You've got a nice soft top layer of foam there, and then the harder rubberized EVA beneath it, and that actually works as the outsole of the shoe as well, which does create some concerns of durability, but it does create a very nice feel on the run. Fit then for me, well, the Nova Blast 3, I would recommend going down half a size. They came up almost like a full thumb's width too long in the shoe, which makes them feel a bit more like a sort of bit more shoe on the foot overall. They are, I think, roomier across the midfoot at the top and a little bit roomier in the toe box. But overall, I would recommend having them half a size down so they fit a little bit more snugly. For me, the Mac 5 are a little bit overall kind of more foot hugging. I ran true to size in these. I'd be recommending going true to size. And uh, yeah, there's just a, there's a little bit less kind of wiggle room in the toe box. They're a little bit more narrow, I think, across this kind of midfoot section, but they hold the foot really well. In both cases, in terms of fit, I had no problem with the way that the heel kind of held the, the heel firmly in place. So Nova Blast 3, I'd go half a size down. The Hoka Mac 5, I would go true to size. If you like a slightly roomier fit or you need a wider fit, then I think the Nova Blast is probably a little bit more your thing. So fit for me are the Mac 5 and the Nova Blast 3. And I should add this is the Nova Blast 3 TR because I had to loan my Nova Blast 3 to Tom so he could finish off his testing for the multi-tester review. Um, the Mac 5 definitely fits more narrow. It did for me, so I think that's something to be wary of here. Whereas I think with the Nova Blast 3, it's a little bit more accommodating in comparison. Um, but it can run a little bit long, I think, or may run a little bit long for some people. So maybe worth toying with going half a size. Well, I think mainly on the Mac 5, go true to size, but it is a narrow fit based on my testing. And yeah, just elements like the upper, and um, they've got similar tongues here. I think you get good lockdown kind of feel on both of these shoes. But yeah, narrow fit on the Mac 5, a little bit more accommodating on the Nova Blast 3. Okay, so the fit for me in these two shoes, I would say the Hocker Mac 5 is definitely true to size. I wouldn't size up or down in the shoe. It's a very comfortable shoe. Um, and it is a hocker, so it's slightly narrow. So if you start playing around with the size as well, you might start finding issues with the narrowness of that midfoot. So I'd stick to the size in the Mac 5. Uh, in the A6 Nova Blast 3, now it, it does feel like it's a slightly long shoe. There's a bit of extra space in there, but the problem is once you start uh, sizing down to remove that space, it can become a bit more narrow on the foot. And we have heard 
from people that they have sized down and it becomes a little bit too narrow. I would definitely stick to your size in the Nova Blast 3 as well. I have done in the Nova Blast 1 and 2, which were equally spacious in the uh, toe section of the shoe, and I've had no issues from either of those shoes either. So I'd stick to true to size in both of these shoes. Fit of the shoe, I've been very happy true to size in the Mac 5 all round, and the Nova Blast, I've been okay true to size, but it is quite long in the toe box. I would probably suggest going half size down. That's what I'd do if I was getting the shoe again, but it hasn't been a big problem for me on the run, but yeah, I think it probably does run a little bit long in the toe box. So the Mac 5 is one of my favourite daily trainers. I also absolutely love the Mac 4. Didn't really like the Mac Supersonic as much, but it wasn't a bad shoe. It just wasn't as good as the classic Macs. The 5 just has a really great ride to it. It's very comfortable. It's very smooth. It's, um, you know, it just disappears on the foot, really. There's not a lot going on in the midsole compared to some other shoes. It's not aggressively springy or overly soft. There's no plate in there. It just works really well at a nice range of paces, I find. And, like, and it just feels very natural. So you go out for a really slow shuffle in the shoe and, you know, it feels great. It's lightweight. It's still comfortable, though. There's enough cushioning there, despite the, I guess, relatively low stack by modern standards but then when you do want to up the pace it's very light it's nimble you just get a nice smooth roll through from the rocker in the shoe and the phones give you a little bit of bounce back but it's nothing too dramatic I've just done loads of daily training in this shoe lots of kind of easy runs progression runs and reasonably hard 10 mile or i finished at around 330 per k pace in it and it and like i say it just works really nicely at a broad range of paces you know it's not got a fantastic top end speed compared to some of the plated training shoes on the market but because it is so lightweight you can go and do short hard reps at the track in it really well i think where it might suffer is probably on slightly longer hard reps and you're moving almost towards like hard 5ks and that kind of thing when you might want the plate to give you that little bit more efficiency and propulsion late in those runs but otherwise it's a really good do it all trainer i certainly think it's comfortable enough to just go long and easy in any time you want to but, but then it's a great option to up the pace in for sessions and tempo runs as well so the outsole is still a little bit of a problem it wears down fairly quickly because you haven't got any rubber on there but the, actually the grip's pretty good and I do think one of the reasons the ride is so nice and natural on the foot is you haven't got a rubber there any rubber there so it's a bit of a trade-off. Nova Blast 3 I absolutely adored in my first run in the shoe in fact my first couple of runs it felt really bouncy really exciting it felt like it was going to be a really good first old daily training because it is quite lightweight and it's got a lot of spring but so much cushioning there it's good for easy runs since then I've gone off it a little bit I really prefer it mainly now just for kind of easy and slow and long runs and that kind of thing I when I've been doing speedier runs in it, it's felt a bit big, a bit hefty on the foot at times. And it, it's kind of the opposite of the Mac in that it doesn't feel very natural. I'm very aware of it on my foot. It's a big shoe and it's got a lot of spring in it, um, but it yeah, it doesn't really disappear on the foot and I don't love the way it feels at pace. Um, I'd say the ride has dulled a little bit from those first couple of runs where you know there really was a lot of spring in it, fresh out the box. It feels better than it feels you know after about 50, 60K, but it still feels pretty good. It is bouncier than the Mac. It's that kind of ride, but it's not quite as smooth rocking from heel to toe for me and like I said I'm just a bit aware of it when I try and run quick in it it doesn't feel as good as the Mac which just allows you to ease through the gears really comfortably. Uh, the outsole of the shoe was a bit of a problem in my first couple of runs it was a bit slick but actually since then it's improved I think it might just roughed up slightly after a couple of runs and going for runs on wet pavements now I don't have any major concerns about grip at all so that was a big concern in our first run but I'm not sure it's uh, that big a problem with the shoe in the long run. So in terms of that run test and I have definitely run more in the Mac 5 than I have in the Nova Blast 3. I've raced in the Mac 5 as well. Myself and Tom uh, did the Loch Ness 10k in this shoe. Um, now in terms of how these shoes kind of worked for me, I would say the Mac 5 definitely, um, it can work at those easier and kind of more moderate paces but when you want to pick up the pace in this shoe that's where it really excels in comparison to the Nova Blast 3 where I think it's best suited or I found it's best suited to kind of kind of easy to moderate paces I think you can pick up the pace in them but I feel that you're, you're getting more out of the Mac 5 when you are running quicker and it's one that I would use for quicker sessions I would potentially race in it as well kind of shorter distances I think you can go long in these shoes as well um, I think maybe you're going to get a more comfortable feeling running in the Nova Blast 3, whereas I think if you're running quick, you're running hard uh, in the Nova, in the uh, Mac 5, then I think you will you'll be fine. I think if you have to slow up, I think almost you'd you'd want a little bit more extra space, something a bit more spacious in terms of that upper, where it kind of, as I said, it does fit a bit narrow. Um, in terms of elsewhere, I think outside wise, I think the Nova Blast 3 is going to give you more mileage, more durability. Uh, as I said, this is the 3TR but I even think the the standard 3 you are going to get a bit more mileage out of it whereas I think you still have that issue with the Mac 5 as we did with the Mac 4 where I think the outsole durability is not fantastic and it can go flat but I think if you're using it for the right sessions and I think it's the same for Nova Blast 3 
then it can work very, very well. I do think this is best, as I said, it can work at a variety of speeds, but I think if you want to use something for kind of intervals, track, uh, you want to race in quick, then I think the Mac 5 works really, really well. I think for me, the Note Bar Suite is a very solid daily trainer, um, less remarkable at those kind of quicker paces, but it is still a solid shoe overall. And that's kind of where I found it most useful when I just want to go out and run and log some miles. And um, that's kind of where it, it fits best. Whereas I think the Mac 5, I think you can do that as well. But I think if you want to go quick in it, it you can go quick in it and it feels nice to go um, fast in it too. Okay, so these two shoes are both shoes that you would look at if you may be looking for a daily training shoe, um, but they are very different uh, options or types of shoe when it comes to daily training miles. And it largely comes down to what type of shoe or what type of running uh, your daily training is. Uh, the big difference between these shoes is that, as you can probably see from the Asus Nova Bass 3 and the Mac 5, that there's a lot more cushioning in Nova Bass 3. It is a quite a beefy shoe. Um, and even though it's a daily training shoe, it's a daily training shoe that veers more towards that cushion side of running. So uh, if you're a lot of your daily training miles are a bit slower or you want a bit more cushioning in your runs, then the Nova Blast 3 is a better option for that. I find the Nova Blast 3 is a great option for when you um, are doing a lot of miles in your training uh, and you just want something to sort of tick off the miles. You're not doing a lot of tempo stuff in it you're not trying to um, run a lot of intervals and stuff like that in it because even though it can do it's it's a relatively versatile shoe and it and you you can do faster running in it it doesn't excel in it uh, for me um, so I definitely wouldn't pick this shoe up if I was going out to do a sort of progression run or a tempo run or an interval session uh, if I was on holiday and I took one pair of shoes with me and it was a Nova Blast 3 you can do those things in it it's just not the best shoe out there for for doing that sort of running so it's a it's a it's a shoe that uh, even though it's a daily training shoe it's a shoe for me that skews more towards the more comfortable daily training miles as opposed to being a versatile one that you can use for for running faster which brings me on to the hot hoka mac 5. now hoka mac 5 is an interesting one because it's almost the opposite of that um it is a daily training shoe that is quite versatile uh, surprisingly versatile actually because it's quite a lean looking shoe it's quite a light feeling shoe um, but it's a shoe that veers more towards those faster efforts. Um, I've been doing a lot of marathon training recently. I've just finished um, Chicago Marathon. Um, so two or three runs of the week that I was doing were interval sessions, progression runs. Uh, and I was really enjoying using the, using the Hocker Mac 5 for that because you can go out there and you can do a half hour easy session as part of your run and then start doing intervals. And it can handle all of that. It is surprisingly comfortable to wear um, based on the cushioning that it's got in it. It feels more cushioned than it looks, um, but you can go faster than this shoe. It feels very lean, it feels very light. Uh, when you start doing those reps, when you start picking up the pace and doing shorter intervals and going faster, it's very good at that. Um, and I think that's where the Mac 5's strengths lie. It's that versatility at that end of the scale. Conversely, when uh, it comes to cushioning, it's fine, but it doesn't excel in that area. So I wouldn't do loads of slow, long mileage in this shoe just because it, it's not really designed for that. It can do it. You can go out and you could do plenty of runs in it, but it just doesn't have the level of cushioning and um, comfort that you'd get from the A6 Nova Blast 3. And everything about the shoe really does sort of scream that. There's so much padding around the Nova Blast 3. It's a very comfortable shoe to have on the foot. Uh, whereas the Hocker Mac 5, it's got a bit of padding, but it's really, it's a leaner shoe and much better if you want something versatile that goes towards that sort of faster end of the spectrum. But the easiest way to compare it would be is if I had to take one pair of shoes on holiday uh, and I was doing lots of fast running, I'd take the Mac 5. If I was just going to go and have a nice relaxed holiday or I wanted to tick off a few miles, but I wasn't really training hard, the Nova Blast 3 is probably the one that I would go for. So the run test then, I've done more miles in the Nova Blast 3 than I have in the Hoka Mac 5. I've done it at my kind of usual tarmac pavements and a little bit of river trail part, so a little bit stony, uneven ground to put them through a proper test. That's the kind of thing, mainly compacted though, rather than wet. I've also done it at a mixture of paces, everything from really easy plod right up to kind of sort of faster, higher tempo stuff. I've also done a mile wearing one shoe on each foot to really dial in that comparison. Now, one thing I will take away from that is that I think these shoes actually run fairly similar. There's not a huge amount to choose between. There's a, there's a startlingly kind of similar ride from both of them. You've obviously got a slightly higher stack of cushion on the Nova Blast 3 than you do 
on the Hoka Mac 5. And I think that overall, if you're going to sort of choose a difference, maybe the Nova Blast 3 runs a little bit softer, a little bit more sinky, and the Hoka Mac 5 comes in a little bit more firm, there's a little bit more ground contact, you're a little bit more connected. When you're running easy paces, I think there's less to choose between them when you're moving up kind of through the gears and running at a kind of sort of higher intensity where your form's a little bit different. And that's really where I think the Mac 5 edges it just. I think this is a slightly more agile, nimble, punchy ride. I think you feel that kind of early stage meta rocker a little bit more in this when you're moving at a faster clip. Whereas I feel like the Nova Blast 3 copes sort of, it's more like an easy to kind of mid intensity, mid pace kind of shoe. That's where it really excels. I think the Mac 5 has a little bit more versatility, a little bit more range on the foot. I think it just copes a little bit better at four, sort of faster paces. Now the Nova Blast 3, I've said it in all the other videos and comparisons we've done, I do think that this is a better shoe than the two. I do feel like that change of foam has made it a little bit less sinky and a little bit less sappy. It's a little bit more punchy, but I still don't think it's up there with some of the better daily trainers. And I feel like I have to work a little harder in them than I do in the Hoka Mac 5. Now the Hoka Mac 5 is an absolute joy to run in. I really enjoyed running this. I did a two and a half hour, 17 mile run straight out the box put them on, disappearing foot feel, really good step in comfort, ran effortlessly and easily in it and really enjoyed. I could have run on in them straight out of the box. That's a real kind of, you know, it's a commends them to me when I can put a shoe on and do that and they just disappear and I'm happy running them. The Mac 5 really fits that bill, a shoe that I'd definitely be happy to kind of move around sort of low intensity runs in for sure. Now, like the Nova Blast 3, I think the Hoka Mac 5 is still a fairly big shoe on the foot. It's obviously slightly lighter. I'm not really sure that you feel that difference when you've got them both on, on, on your feet. There's not a huge amount. I, I feel like there's maybe a little bit marginally more kind of stability that comes from the Hoka Mac 5. And I think that's probably down to that kind of lower drop and also that kind of smaller stack of foam that's for me is just a little bit firmer. So overall, I get a little bit more stability from the Hoka, Hoka Mac 5 than I do from the Nova Blast 3. Beyond that, I think I prefer the way that the uppers on the Hoka Mac 5 kind of wrap. I much prefer these uppers, I think, to the Nova Blast 3. Also, when it comes to kind of colorways, I'm much more of a fan of this guy than I am of this one. I, oh, I just don't think Asics makes the Nova Blast. I've not really seen a good looking Nova Blast yet, but that's just me. I much prefer this a bit lighter. It's a bit more my thing. Okay, so my verdict on these two shoes is that I think they're both excellent daily training shoes. I think they're both great shoes if you uh, want a daily training option as part of your rotation. I also think they're both great daily training shoes if you want just one pair of shoes to do all of your training in. Um, but they both have strengths uh, that are worth noting. So if you're a sort of runner that is ticking off the miles, maybe you're doing a few runs a week and you want comfort, but you also want a bit of versatility and go, right, some days I'm going to go a little bit faster, some days I'm just going to pick it up, pick up the pace a little bit, um, and maybe you're even doing like part runs and um, faster sessions in it. The Nova Blast 3 would be fine, um, but it's gonna, you're going to get limited when at a certain level. So if you start getting to the point where you really want to pick up the pace and you want to you're looking at the times in races and you're you're trying to get faster intervals nova blast is going to cap out at a certain point you're going to you're going to start feeling that this shoe is just not giving you what you need from um running faster whereas the hoka mac 5 i use the hoka mac 5 as a tempo shoe um i prefer to use this quite a lot of the time uh, instead of training in a plated shoe um, because i quite like the natural feel of this a lot of the time and it's definitely a shoe that goes with uh, I've been using the Saucony Endorphin Pro 3 from a lot of my uh, races recently, including Chicago Marathon. Uh, and this was the shoe that I went for um, as a sort of training partner for it. I did have some other ones as well. I was using things like the Saucony uh, Endorphin Speed 3. But this is the one I really enjoyed going because it just felt very comfortable on the feet, felt very natural. But I could really just go hard on those interval sessions. Um, and it yeah just felt very comfortable for those runs so i think ultimately it comes down to the type of daily running that you're doing and where the versatility you want really focuses so if you're going to do a load of speed training tempo training you maybe even want to do racing i'll come back five if comfort's the focus you want but you might want to go a little bit faster Nova Blast 3. So I would rate these two as among the best non-plated training shoes on the market. They're both really good daily trainers. They're nice and versatile. They're cushioned enough for easy runs. They've both got a bit of pace there for speedy runs, but I certainly prefer the Mac 5 of these two shoes. Just, just, It just feels really good to me. The ride is just perfect. It really suits my taste. It's very smooth. It's just very natural. It just disappears on the foot, and it just works 
you know the same at any pace like i've been really happy just going out and shuffling these runs in really high mileage weeks for me in a way i just you know going out and shuffling doing easy runs you know on tired legs it feels comfortable it feels cushioned it just helps you roll through those but then it does have pace in it. it does have a little bit of responsiveness from that midsole foam and it just works really well like i'd actually say probably that you know ff blast plus is a better foam than the foams used on the hocker for shoes like hocker never really has the best foams i think but the geometry of the shoe is so well set up that it just creates a very fluid and enjoyable ride you know no matter what you're doing in it neither are, you know are great for all out pace work but there as well i do think the mac is better because it's lighter and it's smoother and it just you know gets on with the job whereas the nova blast becomes a bit intrusive at paces it feels a bit big and it's just not as good so yeah i would be getting the mac 5 out of these two shoes unless you really do prefer a much bouncier ride um which you will get with the nova blast it's a bouncier shoe but um just be aware it won't feel quite as good as it does out of the box you know in the long term i think the ride does dull off a little bit but yeah two good shoes i think i'd be happy with either mac 5 gets my vote so if i had to pick between the mac 5 and the nova blast v now i will say i do think these are very good daily trainers i think personally in terms of how i use a daily trainer i want something that i can run or have the potential to run a little bit quicker in and i think while i don't generally always like a firmer feeling shoe that's kind of what you get with the mac 5 but i do think when you want to run quicker in it it does feel very very nice uh, and that's kind of what i look for in a daily trainer whereas i think with the nova blast 3 um you are getting something that's a bit more you know the ride's a bit smoother not as aggressive on the mac 5 uh, but that's not a, you know that's not a bad thing i think some people will want that type of daily trainer where you can go out do a lot of mileage uh, maybe pick up the pace slightly but um, ultimately you're kind of running pretty consistent um, speed in this uh, Nova Blast 3. And also I think it maybe offers a little bit more in terms of durability as well too. But yeah, I would say Mac 5 you go if you want a daily trainer where you can run a little bit quicker or feels, you want a shoe that feels nicer to run quick in, potentially race it in as well. The Nova Blast 3, I think another solid daily trainer as well, but probably doesn't work as well at those kind of quicker kind of speeds. It's not, not something that I, you know, if I had to use a or do a track session, I would grab the Mac 5 over the Nova Blast 3 um, without a shadow of a doubt. So yeah, that's my take on the Mac 5 against the Nova Blast 3. I think the Mac 5 gets my vote, but I do think No Blast 3 is going to appeal to uh, loads of other people as well, looking for a, a different kind of daily trainer um, too. Verdict for me then, well, the Nova Blast 3 is a definite improvement on the two for me. I wasn't really a big fan of the two or the one. This is getting nearer to a shoe that I would like to run in. I think it still feels a little bit like too much shoe on the foot, possibly because I ran true to size and I probably need to go down half a size and they feel a little bit boat-like. And that maybe colours my opinion. A lot of people have said you, you don't really get it until you run half a size down and they're a little bit more compact. But overall, I mean, this is a really good, solid, easy day shoe for me. That's how I would use it. Uh, you know, it, it's comfortable to run in. It does have a cut, sort of comfy feel on the foot, if not the most sort of disappearing feel on the foot. And I'd, you know, I'd happily do kind of long and slow miles in it. But if I'm really sort of spending the money choosing which shoe I'd go for, I, I just think the Hoka Mac 5, it can do all of those easy paces really, really nice. It's super comfortable, but it's got more versatility. I think it can kick up and it feels a little bit more nimble and agile on the foot. It's just a little bit more, I don't know, springy active. It's got the things I like, a slightly more kind of connected sort of ground feel, a touch firmer. And overall, I just like the way that it holds my foot better. So because of that range, that versatility, and the fact that it's ever so slightly cheaper, at least it is in the UK here, than the Nova Blast 3, I think I would be choosing the Hoka Mac 5, that would be my go-to. But essentially I think for everyone else it's gonna come down to whether or not you like something that's a slightly marginally softer, higher stacked, uh, more kind of roomy sort of feel on the foot or something that hugs the foot a little bit more, that's a little ever so slightly kind of firmer and has a little bit more ground contact. That's it guys, that is our comparison of the Huckamack 5 and the Asics Nova Blast 3. Um, let us know what you think in the comments below. Are you a fan of either one or both of these shoes? Which would you pick as your daily trainer? Please do like, subscribe, ring the little bell, and we'll see you next time.